Hey guys, so I'm into the into the uh, roof installation at this point, and I wanted to stop and show you my setup. <coughs> what my plan was, so you can see visually, we're looking at about half, three quarters of an inch on that side of the edge before you have a gap. Now, this, uh, this is useless information, but I just wanted to show you yeah. for a reference. And then you see that similar, but I'd say this is a little flatter. Do it again. Okay. So, and that, and not that, you know, for the most part, a lot of that stuff can, it'll get plucked out of there as you're as you're moving straight along and, and whether you see it or not but what i'm doing as you can see is i'm putting these in these are all formed they were stacked they're the same shape they're crowned they come out of that suburban they're formed pieces so and then they taper from here where you can see my grind marks and then they taper down and there was a gap you know, in the roof, there's actually an overlay because the roof was, you know, a lot wider than this. So what I've done is I'm tacking these in, but before I tack them in, I'm clamping flat stock. You know, there's some flat stock there, an angle iron there, but basically a flat surface down. And then right to the inside of the roof as I work my way forward. Uh, tack it in and then do the next piece, tack it in and continue checking it. This follower is just a visual, that level is a follower, it's just a visual reference to keep me in check to make sure that nothing looks goofy. Like at this point, this looks a little flatter than that. As I clamp that piece in, I can look at that if I want to make minor adjustments, but uh, I can, but the reality is that I can move progressively forward and get the best possible result uh, for installing the rib roof that I'm aware of anyway. It's a technique that I'm using. Slowly moving forward. Yeah, on this channel, you can see this has got a step in it. It moves over approximately a quarter of an inch, maybe, maybe closer to three-eighths of an inch. I can get a tape measure if I need to but um, probably eventually will but this is where I'm going to braze I'll pull the pull the paint off here paint off the roof cut the piece so that it fits into that into that channel this is more than a material thickness slightly slightly more than a material thickness um, visually uh, I had a piece on here and um, and so with capillary action, that brazing will should fill into there. I'm I'm thinking, and so this will be the continuous um, uh, silicon copper um, brazing. It's not welding because it's not homologous. I'm not melting. Well, it's homologous, but I'm not melting fusing materials together and you, through capillary action bonding things together anyway that's the that's the status at this point i'm putting the roof bows in and continuing to move forward this last one will go in after i get all those in there is one right there that is plenty long. You see that? He overhangs easily on both sides. Then I'm gonna dolly this as flat as I can. 
and spot weld this from the bottom side after after I clean that those surfaces up. So that's what's going on with, with that piece. I'll keep you posted. All right, folks. Uh, basically four tacks, one, two, three, four on each side. I'm, I'm, <coughs> excuse me, I have the settings at, um, in the neighborhood of a 16 gauge material, pretty, pretty, pretty decent current. I just want to get through. So in some cases, this material is 20 gauge here. This is 18. This center rib is thicker than all the rest. It was, must have been uh, identified as structural. In the Suburban, it was between the doors, and I am putting it between the doors. I'm just doing 16-inch spacing on center spacing um, for the purpose of the, to maximize the structural integrity here. But the, the, this brace, this brace, and this brace, um, these are similar materials. This is thicker material. Not that big of a deal. However, now what we can do, I'm going to get down on my, as we look at the, over the front of the, the vehicle, and I slowly drift down over the, uh, the arc on the, on the, the, the original 1930, the window frame, you can see how well, let me zoom in. This suburban setup does. I mean, that's that is just divine. So that'll allow that roof to follow this arc all the way back. Um, I was talking in the earlier about the gap beyond each side on the on a flat cert on a flat uh, this level and i was very conscious of that as i strapped on and and held this down to one material thickness very conscious of following that that visual cue so that that my material Whatever transition or change, you know, as this gets wider, I want to make sure that transition to the sheet metal stays consistent and it's budding right up to the surface of this, that material thickness, 18 gauge in this case, 19 gauge in this case, sits right on that surface. So, so when I come in to braise it, I'm just grinding this down and any amount of filler is minimized hopefully just the primer surfacer um, it's a lot of area to weld but that is the plan so now i'm going to come in and start cleaning some of this up so that i can weld in that that last brace as far back as possible as far back as possible in this curve so the nice thing about the lighter lighter material this is well, there's an example of how we cut it i will pull off uh that backer that's where it went into a 90 degree brace on the suburban this side is off actually i might be able to just cut it off at that end because i'm hanging over so far right yeah yeah, I got plenty of material, so actually I can just zip it on each side here. And then this, I will get in there so that I'm accommodating that angle as best I can. I'm going to make a profile, cardboard profile, of this radius here and here. I'm going to tack that in 
And then I'm going to bring that profile over here and make at least two straps, maybe three straps with that bend in it to support the roof as I bring it around, bring it around the, the bend. Got a couple of concepts, been talking with my son, who gave me some ideas on rolling the rib, rolling the rib around that, so that that rib ends in this neighborhood and follows around the roof. It's kind of a crazy idea, but if it works, wow. If it doesn't, I chop it off and I, I God only knows what I do if it, if it doesn't work. But that's the current game plan. We'll see what the challenges bring here as we move forward. All right, so I was getting a little carried away and I thought I better get some, some recording done. So I did get this all, all straightened out. It's a little bit fl um, flimsy, but I got the the shape. The shape actually turned out really good. I'm trying to look for. Just grab my phone. Okay, right here. So I made this wood buck, and we'll, I'll show you why I got the burn marks on it later. But the buck switch hands here this is the better of the two sides and I I indexed off of I did a start at zero indexed one inch increments all the way down you can see my four and my five line up with my four and my five and I'm touching the back key is of course to get both of them the same now this this cutout is substantially different than this one and I wasn't going to copy the cutout but this one is not cut as far back as that one is as you can see but my reference lines are as they are Whoop. and yes and there I got a little tiny bit of work to do on the back but um, where's my four and my five well oh, there's my four and my five right there and I got to kind of line them up this way, but I made several marks and I'm, I'm hitting, um, this material, there was a tear here where I drilled a hole to stop that, but this has to go up ever so slightly, this hole ever so slightly. And I'll, I'll hold that when I get, get to that point, just like I did all the rest of those. Then I took and made two pieces that copy the profile of this wood at the right increments so on and so forth they, they copy it okay use my shrinker stretcher but I got to a point where I could no longer shrink or stretch so then I slotted tigged and then did the same thing shrink or stretch so that's some inside beef on this I marked it out and now I'm in the process I drilled holes every one inch on the on those lines so I can reference I line this up with my reference and I sheet metal screw it down and it'll pull pull this up because I have I have it rolled so I did that for each side I'm at that phase where I'm gonna stick it on now stick each side on um, I'm, I'm substantially narrower than the, than the roof. It really doesn't matter how straight it goes because the roof is going to get cut to this profile right here. And, and I'll braze that in, you know, with the 332nd, you know what I mean, 16th, 332nd inch cut from a cutoff wheel. I want to have that width in here and then I'll braze this all together, but I'm just going to tack it, um, you know, just plug weld it with the MIG right now, taking some time to let it cool to hold those in. And then, you know, get that piece in. And then, I don't know how many, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do here to get this shape because we can see this crown's this way, very similar to that crown. So, 
it's going to continue to be a bit of a challenge, but um, I'm able to form up smaller pieces, and uh, that keeps me going. So we're getting there. Well, would you look at that? I took a trip to my brother's place and uh, about 100 miles away and met with my son and that. and We rolled out this piece of 18 gauge. And remember this crown's, right? It's got a gentle crown that way. Very similar crown around the back. You know, because it widens out, right? And then across the top, because he goes like that, probably a little more in the back. Anyway, um, we rolled this out, and then I cut carefully cut it and filled it in. Yeah, it's going to need filler. I ran down with some screws um, and did a lot of tapping. It is going to need a little bit of filler, you know. I peeled away... There's a small amount of filler in here from when I was when I built out this corner. Now this was lead, right? All this was lead originally uh, when they, they welded these down here and there. And I'm just using filler. I'll probably touch this weld with some fiber reinforced, you know, and then come back with filler. But I'm very happy with how this turned out. It looks good. I, I know those damn grind marks, but I wanted to peel the rust off and make sure that I got a surface that I could that I could check against. But it, it turned out really good. It did turn out good. What I did was on here as I stepped it in, put it in the bead roller. <clears throat> okay, so there's the weld seam. But this piece is continuous. You can see some wheel marks in it. But I stepped it over and then down. So this is the same piece of metal going up and around. But I bead rolled it in. And now you can see the continuous weld. Where I screwed it down, I filled those holes, you know, plug welded those holes. So it worked out really good. And then here I tacked on several spots. This will get brazed. I just tacked it to hold it up on this side, but she's tight. Okay, but what I'll do is I'll braze this. Um, I'll leave a gap in here when I pull that roof over, and then I'll fuse this whole thing together. You know, leave like a 30 or 40 thousandths gap. And then when I braze weld it, I'll attach this to this, to the roof skin. And again, I'll clean this channel out and that roof skin will sit in this channel. Some of what you got to see right there. I got to get a wire brush in there because there's still paint in there. And clean it back a little ways. But that's the surface that that, that, that roof panel will sit in. And as I dig back in here, you can see there, that's just solder. That's solder. I got to grind out all that solder. And I got to touch these areas up. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. It's nice. Should look good. Coming along. Until next time, folks, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the rebound. Well, this, uh, this round, I, well, well, the bin, both sides, welded in these braces. It is, you know, 18 gauge isn't isn't that easy to weld to begin with. I mean, it's not that hard, but if you want penetration, you gotta you gotta give her the gusto. 
But anyway, uh, the point being that uh, I want I got these in, got them rigid, um, and now uh, I went around and cleaned the channels out. And I'll, I'm sure I'll have to hit them again. But at least at this point, I got a nice sharp line. And you see here where the where there's a seam right here. That's a that's a lead seam. That's a, that's where it was arc welded together in the factory. You can see I've got I've got two layers here. No, I got one. No, I got I have two layers here. This is kitty hair or uh, uh, strand reinforced fiberglass on the bottom. Uh, was with in this case the the lead was pretty well ground out. The same thing up here. I came in and I don't know if this is in a video, but I came in and re welded this because we had a tear in this one. I remember that. But anyway, I'm cleaning out all these grooves because I'm going to sit on this tree eight, right? I'm going to sit on that shelf right there with my new sheet. Here you can see um, there's a slit in there, but this was all lead in this side. This side wasn't cracked evidently, so I'm cleaning it out. I, I'll have to clean it some more. I think, I, I don't know if I'm down to the metal, because, you know, it's all weld and ground back in the day. And cleaning on up, and then this guy here, oh, the maya. And I would have known that when I put the, you can see the blue is the, is the reinforced uh, fiberglass or fiber reinforced uh, material. And then that's just regular filler right here. And maybe getting on a, it's kind of hard to tell, but the material thickness here is, it's up there. It's, I mean, it's maybe an eighth, three sixteenths of an inch, you know, as compared to, compared to just feathering out here but they just hammered the snot you can see that's lead there that 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 is the lead in the in the metal and they they just hammered it when they built the car they just hammered it on the v and then filled it up with lead that was the process no big deal. I'm going to fill it up with... And lead, of course, is a good sealer. Uh, it's just a hard process. I'm going to use fiber-reinforced um, material on the on the seams. Just a small layer. Sand that off and then come back with regular filler. So, at this point, I got that all scraped out now. And... Uh, and these all welded on. So now I am going to uh, orient and properly size my, my roof panel. So that E sits in here with a window or a slight gap so that the brazing can fall into there all the way around. All the way around. And we will get her ready to go. Ready to go. So that's the plan. Get that guy on. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, there's nothing ever truly perfect on these old 19, 19, what the hell is going on? On these 1930s and these old vintage cars in terms of squareness. But this roof I cut off of a came off of a 1718 Suburban okay and we just cut along a roof rail okay and then I just trimmed it trimmed off the edges if you've been watching you can see that now I identified I cut off the front section this is the front now okay marked and cut the uh, you know then I get to thinking are you gonna need more information the 15 inches, 14 and 7 eighths inches of waist is sitting over there, right there. And now that, that piece will get married to this piece, okay? 
So, so I'm landing on a, on one of these braces right here. That's the intent, somewhere midway on that brace. And, and back to this then. So you can see that I marked on the front and the back, I marked this edge on the front and the back. On this side, and then on this side. But we can see, okay, we can see that this is getting wider as we go back and this one is staying consistent as we go back. And now I know this isn't perfectly square. I mean, I've been dealing with that. So what I decided to do is just to check my rail, and I know it's narrower in the back, this opening is narrower in the back than it is in the front. So I wanted to cross check, check to visually compare. So we got about what, seven and three eighths, right? Seven and three eighths. There's flies in here. You know, just like maybe a scotch over seven and three eighths. So putting it there and there and chopping that off, those ribs will center the center line on the rib will line up with the center line right there that black line I double checked everything and this red line was off that black line okay on the back to my line and you know on gonna be a 30 second or so off but seven and a 30 uh, seven and come on right there seven and a 64th change hands here oh for crying in the mud Looks like about a 64th or a 32nd shy, right? A 7. 64th shy of 7, right there. So, I mean, it's pretty damn well centered. It's pretty damn well centered. So this cut was a little off. It does get narrower, but I got everything centered up. So any out of squareness on this edge... And on this edge, which I know this, it goes one, it goes that direction. But that's you know, some. I'm going to cut these edges, drop it in, and trim them until I get it to fit properly. Talk to you later. Well, you can see a lot of magic marker lines and things like that <clears throat> at this point what I've done you can see this is the old cutoff piece that wound up having the arch or the taper to the roof uh, that came off of the Suburban chassis sir Suburban Yukon XL chassis and these squiggly lines are areas where I'm putting my panel bond um, I've ground the bottom side of this roof and I ground the top side back about, you know, whatever, three quarters of an inch or an inch or so. Same thing on this section. Cleared most of the primer off in one, two, three different sections. That's, you know, I cleaned up the edge here too. That's got to still get cut. You know, this has got to get cut for the front of this. So anyway, um, I'm, I bonded... I panel bonded the back and I'm it's clamped right now waiting for a cure in this case I'm using 3m uh, panel bonding adhesive uh, 
08115. And I'll let that cure, grab another mixing tube, you know, waste a mixing tube. Those things aren't, aren't exactly cheap. But issue is I want to, I want to, I want it to work. So, and that is cheaper. <laughs> so anyway, that's fo fo following the radius. I got a little pencil in there just to take up a little gap that I was noticing. That'll cure out. It's not bonded to anything else, just that sheet to that panel. And then when that's done, I'll continue to use that same location to bond that front to that and get everything properly lined up scaringly scaringly lined up uh so that so that uh i can in a couple of days braise that I'll keep a small gap in there about 40 thou gap in there and uh, then I'll come back and I'll braise it all together. But I'll have that structure underneath. So I'm staying back with the panel bond. You know, I'm going to stay back a few inches there. I got two, three inches that I'll stay back from the weld, which will be up in there. So that's the whole plan of attack. We'll see how well that, uh, that works out for me.